Hi and welcome to Transforming Hospitality, a vlog to discuss the good, the bad and the ugly of the Irish hospitality industry and I'm delighted to say I'm joined here today by my friend John Rankin from Corporate One to One Profiling and we're going to have a little bit of a conversation around what I believe are huge benefits that the industry here in Ireland needs to pay attention to when it comes to looking to secure and hire the most suitable people to join our teams and that's the benefits of having a profile carried out between both your incoming member and the senior member who's going to be looking to manage them. So, John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Would you care to tell us a little bit about what profiling is about for the majority of us who've never heard it before or don't understand it or just new to it? Profiling is about uh, looking at people and seeing how they can work together, seeing if they're compatible or not compatible because a bad hire can cost a business several thousand euro and in some cases that can raise to several hundred thousand depending on what conflict might arise and how vindictive the person is who's leaving. So profiling really is about finding a good fit and then helping the business to grow through that good fit. Excellent. Uh, I mean, and some of the benefits to carrying out profiling on between both people or both parties? The benefits would be uh, you get loyalty you get inclusion, you get um, good places to work. So you'd have all the things that people want and aspire to so that they are growing their business rather than just managing their business, that they're adding value. And at the end of the day, they have a good solid workforce that are happy. So it would be fair to assume that if I carry out a profile between you and me and we're going to work together, I have a much better chance that you're going to stay with me long term. So whatever training I invest into training and developing you to the way we do business, you're probably going to be with me for the long term for me to reap the rewards and for my guests to get a better guest experience, as opposed to if I just hire you and hope you're going to be a right yeah. fit for me and hope you're going to stay with me in 18 months but ultimately to find out six months down the road when it goes to hell in a handbasket someday, we throw the toilet out of the pram and we can't figure out how to move forward and one of us leaves and ultimately it's probably not going to be the owner, it's going to be the new hire comes in and then they're back out the door frustrated and yeah. annoyed and looking for their next role and the owner's frustrated and annoyed, wondering why did I waste my time and energy training this person. Well, you see, one of, one of the things is human nature. If someone wants a job, they'll be the nicest in the world, they'll get hired because you know, they, they seem to uh, tick all the boxes. And a, a ticking a box, box exercise, when you don't know what the end game is, you know, as you say, is the person going to stay longer than the training period? Is he only in here for the training period so that he can use me as a, a step to get to a bigger and better job? Yeah. You know, if, if you're compatible with someone, in other words, compatibility is about liking or disliking someone. So if you're not compatible, you dislike, but you won't, mightn't show it. People are very good at masking you know, this, this um, artificial intelligence or uh, emotional intelligence that people are learning. They're learning how to manage their own emotions. So they're not maybe showing you know, their true self. Six months down the line, you then have the situation where, well, he's now got a permanent job, he's now on a good salary, he's now being trained, he's looking at you know, going up the corporate ladder, and all of a sudden he starts demanding or causing trouble with other staff. And you're going, what the hell's going on here? You know? So profiling is about answering, you know, are these people going to get on together? Are they not? What, what will happen? if I put someone into managing a team and he is just an absolute unmitigated disaster. Mm -hmm. So you learn about all that without having to wait the six months to do it. Pretty good. So it sort of cuts out a bit of the uh, where we've gone to as a, a society and we've become very good at being two-faced when yes. it comes to getting what it is we think we need or yeah. the person wants to hear. So we ultimately can pick up what it is we want out of it until yeah. we figure out whether Meh, I don't really like this, but I'm just going to stay telling you what you want to hear until I go figure out something else yeah. and move on again. Yeah. So that's that is is the inherent problem with within, within the industry. And I mean, I know I've personally been profiled, and and we've had our team profiled, um, and it was a very interesting process to where 
had a lot of, I suppose, at times, wonders or queries about the team and were we going to be the right fit for each other and, and maybe, you know, constantly kept hoping something would change or something would get better with a certain team member. And really, if I had a profile at the very start, I would have found out at the very start, this person was never going to be what it is I hoped or they talked or said they were going to be at the interview process. And really, they would forever be what it is they are. And there's nothing I can do to change it or make them the person I want them to yeah. be. Tra- training will never change that. You, know, you can train someone. They will do it for a certain length of time, appeasing mm-hmm. the management. But eventually, they'll revert to their own colours and will just stop working, stop cooperating. And so, in actual fact, might even be, vind- as I say, vindictive and hurt, really hurt mm-hmm. the business. And, and it's interesting, one of the challenges that we definitely deal with as an industry is this fear about hiring somebody new to come into the team, especially in a management position, and hoping that they're going to work out and hoping they're going to be with us long term, but also at the same stage, hoping that they're going to be able to look after and, and deliver what our company philosophy is and our company ethos is to the team underneath them. Yeah. But really, if this person has just told me everything I want to hear the interview process as opposed to really being invested into what it is we're looking to do as a company, they're never going to be able to lead their teams forward either. So no. I ultimately have probably created a scenario to where I'm frustrated as an owner because my team isn't delivering what it is my team wants to deliver, but yet the person I've put in between myself and the team is the wrong person to deliver the message in the first place. So the team now are being, I suppose, hampered and hammered for not delivering what I wanted them and expected them to deliver but it's the middle person is the one who's causing all the problems. Um, and I'm sure it probably leads to a lot of people leaving teams. It, absolutely. I mean, there is the saying which was coined by the Gallup uh, Research Institute where they uh, found out that people leave people, not mm. companies. Mm. So if, if one adopts that, uh, that attitude, you know, people are, are going to leave people. So it is vitally important to get the people aspect right because the people actually deliver on the business. And if your frontline staff are unhappy, you know, two things happen. One, they let your customers know mm. that they're unhappy. Yeah. But also, they, you know, they, they are less cooperative to you as in management. They're less um, accommodating, for want of a better word where they give that discretionary effort that everyone wants. They want people to be enthusiastic. They want people to buy into their ethos and culture. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, okay, by lining up the people properly and saying, right, I know that you're compatible and you can work with this person. I also know what's going to happen if the person goes under stress or under continual stress and how that is going to affect the working relationship. Now, this is a whole new concept. In, in so far as you're then aligning the people, you, you are, gr- are helping your client grow the business and in helping your client grow the business, they have a happy team and they're always going to refer back, right, I know this works, so therefore I'm going to continue using it. So I suppose a bit of what we would always preach even in the hospitality industry from an early age up, that is if we can find and hire people who are passionate about our property and yeah. passionate about what we're looking to deliver mm-hmm. to our guests, we surely can teach them and train them and everything they need to know for the experience yeah. they will deliver to our guests. And I suppose from what you're saying, it sounds like if a team is profiled to each other, we should always have a team that are going to be much more productive together and oh, much absolutely. happier working together. Yeah. And ultimately in our industry, the people industry, a happy team means happy customers. Yeah. And happy customers means more repeat customers, which means ultimately more bottom line net profit yeah. at the end of the day. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and one of the important things is there generally in business they're talking about diversity and inclusion Mm -hmm. so the diversity is having a diverse team but being able to include everyone within the team Mm -hmm. now that is possible Mm -hmm. once you're profiling people to each other and you can then build the team to reflect the management culture Mm -hmm. but also then to deliver on customer experience so a little bit like say watching my favorite for my sins soccer team playing liverpool there's no point in having a fantastic striker who's got an arrogant attitude to the rest of the yep. team and thinks he's above them and better than them. And then the defenders decide, well, maybe we aren't as invested into the outcome of this result here today. And if you want to be the show boy up at the front, knock yourself out, but we're not going to support and help you. And ultimately, as a club, you might win the occasional game, but you're sure as hell not going to win the league. You know, the funny thing is you know, that you mentioned sport. Uh, Babe Ruth 
came up with that, you know, you can have all the best players in the world, but they can't play together. Mm. And therefore the team is not worth the damn. And it was proven, you know, through, I think it was two Olympics where the first one they picked the dream team. Mm. And that's where yeah. the dream team came. And then uh, in the second Olympics, they said, right, we're going to do the same because it worked the last time. And places like Venezuela beat yep. you know, America. Yep. You know, unknowns mm. beat America. Mm. And they were going, what the hell went wrong? They had the greatest players, but they just couldn't play together. So, so knowing yeah. the personalities, yeah. you know, so you, you avoid things like clashes of personalities or flare-ups or disagreements mm. and you know, people sulking and therefore things not getting done. The, the knock-on effect of not being able to manage people properly is huge. And I suppose at the end of the day, you all want to go and work in with a team, be it a big team, a small team, where we enjoy working with yeah, each other. Where we and enjoy we all feel like we're yeah. a team, we're yeah. here to achieve something together. Yeah. Not, I'm here to be somebody else's fetch and grab it. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. For anyone who, who's interested about you know, what it is we're talking about, how does profiling work? What, what, what happens? What's the first step? The, the first step is actually uh, getting everyone's personality. It's done through a very, very simple 27 questions. Uh, it is based on a similar uh, philosophy as psychometric testing uh, to actually uh, quantify that and clarify it. Carl Jung did uh, did study, you know, profiling people, profiling um, in Orient in the Orient. Uh, he wrote a foreword to a book relating to a person's personality and, and subconscious, and uh, he was interested in why people behaved in a certain way. So he was a clinical doctor asking why people behaved in a certain way. If he had taken it and gone a little bit deeper, he would have been why people behave differently with different people. Now that would have taken the, the, the matter to where we are now yeah. in profiling people. But he just wanted to know how an individual behaves. So psychometrics is about individuals. What I do is about comparing personalities and comparing people mm. to see if they can work together. It's deeper, it's more meaningful, it has more impact on business and it, it helps with developing the person, the people, the team. And if you lose someone out of the team, you can identify then, right, I've lost that personality, I need to replace it with a similar personality, and therefore to hold the team together and be more, rather than saying, oh, I'm gonna hire this guy, he has all the qualifications of the world, and I hope he works out. Interesting. I mean, you know, I mean it, it definitely <coughs> sounds like for an industry at the moment where from the recruitment point of view, everyone is, I suppose, constantly hoping and, and dreading that the person that they put into a new opportunity, to a new career, that they stay past the three months so they don't have to do a refund, so they don't yes. have to be working for free. Mm -hmm. For the, the organizations, the clients, the operators, it's that dreaded fear of, so we've just gone through this process and I really hope you're gonna stay with me and now I'm gonna train you and bring you into our mm -hmm. culture and I hope you're gonna be here for the next two to three years. And probably even more important from my point of view, for the people within the industry who are looking to have careers with operators who are really going to invest into them and their future and what it is they're looking to achieve, both personally, but also both professionally, it would almost make me wonder, is it something that the people within the industry should be demanding that happens at the interview process with somebody that they're going to interview and potentially work with to make sure that if I'm going to potentially join you as a GM, I want to know. I'm going to get on well with you in six to nine months down the road yep. when it goes to head in a handbasket someday and we're at each other's throats because we're both frustrated and tired and we're overworked and it's busy and it's stressful. Are we going to be able to go, I see where you're coming from, you see my point, mm. okay, let's move on with this and it's not going to be the end of the world because the last thing I would want is to have to go and start the career search all over again, the next operator, the next relocation, moving towns, packing apartments up, it's, it's definitely something that I think the people that are working within this hospitality industry at the moment themselves, maybe they need to take on the initiative and say, you know, I really would like us to do a bit of a one-to-one -one profile here before I decide whether you are the right fit for my career or not. Yeah. Because the part I notice and I see a lot of at the moment in our industry is, and we've great news, we've great promotion and advertising and, and media about we need 
five thousand new bedrooms, I think it is, by twenty twenty, and I'm I'm concerned and worried. Where are we going to find all these people for mm. all of these new properties? Yep. We don't have enough people as it is in the industry at the moment. So the people who we have got in this industry who are committed to having a career in this industry, it might be the most common sense thing for them to do and, and maybe the best thing for them to do for their career is to demand or ask or suggest, could we be profiled before I decide mm. you're the right fit for me? Because more and more what we're seeing now is it's the people choose who do they work mm. with, not the clients choose, yeah. it's just the person who's going to work with me or not. So well, maybe it could be an interesting... Uh, an interesting topic for everyone to sort of get involved with and give us your five cents on. Well, one of one of the things, you know, to mention the Gallup organization again, they found that in high turnover industries, if they get the fit right, you know, between personalities, that they can reduce turnover by over 30%. Hmm. Now, I mean, that is a huge saving hmm. on just recruitment hmm. costs, on training costs, on... Everything that all the yeah. knock on yeah. that goes from there. So, if you can save that plus mm. by just proper profiling, saying, Right, I know you're going to be able to fit into this yeah. team, I know you know if there's a problem, you know, we'll whether yeah, we'll be able to figure it out why because you're looking at knowing, you yeah. know, from, from say maybe a, a very senior manager in position saying, Why is that team working and that one's not? looking at then the team mm -hmm. and the management of the team and saying, ah, there's conflict here. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it before. Okay, I can change mm -hmm. that person out and put in someone else who's, who's going to be less mm -hmm. disruptive. So you're being very proactive, but in being proactive, you're making huge savings. Uh, and then if problems arise, that they're identifiable in the people area. Yeah. You know, if there are products or services mm -hmm. or things being stolen or whatever, that can be, that's another issue. But mm -hmm. If people are unhappy, you know, they won't work properly. Mm. If they're happy, they'll they'll give that discretionary effort, and that is going to make all the difference. Mm. And God knows, I personally know of a lot of stories in the industry at the moment. You know, in hotels and in some of our leading four and five star properties, where great GMs have been in place. They've built great teams. They've delivered great properties, great services. They've built up a great guest profile of customers who repeatedly want to come back. They take the decision then to move on to their next career step, a new GM comes in place and the team falls apart around them and leaves them. You know, it's a shame when you see somebody give two or three or five years of their effort and energy to a property, to building a team like we have here at the beautiful Westbury Hotel, a great team, a very efficient and passionate team. It'd be a horrible thing to see a GM leave, a new GM come in place with the wrong company philosophy or mentality or the wrong profile for the team that are here and then all of the good work of the previous five years sort of falls apart. So I think maybe for the operators who are in the industry who are looking at this or listening to this, I definitely urge you it's something that I think you need to investigate. I think you need to find out a little bit more about. I think you maybe need to, again, think about playing the long-term game, not the short-term wins. Um, and I truly believe that if you play the long-term game and you profile the people who are going to join your company and make sure you're going to be a good fit for each other, you have a much more successful or a much more um, better opportunity for these people to be with you long-term and have a much more successful business. Um, John, I'd like to thank you for joining me here today. Pleasure. It's been a pleasure chatting as always. Um, if anyone does want to get in touch with you or want to find out more, how do they get in touch with you? What's the, the communications? Uh, generally, it's through the website, www.corporate1to1.com, and the, the one to one is numeric, um, or on uh, 0035387238950. As I said, anybody who's, who's interested in this, anyone who's frustrated and fed up with going through a process for interviewing and for, for recruiting a new team member to then have them leave because it just wasn't a good fit personality wise, this could be a great option and it could be a great way of saving you a lot of headaches in the future. Um, as I said, John, pleasure. Okay. Thanks Thank for you. coming in today Thank you very much. and I will be talking soon. Okay. Again, folks, if you like what you heard here today, if you're interested to find out more, if you want to get involved, we'd love to hear your uh, comments. We'd love to hear your views on this. More importantly, I'd love to hear what topics you'd like us to discuss next. Um, as always, follow the show, subscribe if you can, um, find me on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and as always, looking forward to talking to you again.